welcome to problem session 5 in this session we start with problem 24 does the Fourier cosine transform of f of x equal to e raised to x exist give the reason so here we are going to use the mandatory condition for existence of Fourier cosine transform the Fourier cosine transform exists only if the modulus of this f of x that is modulus e raised to x is finite or it is absolutely integrable. E raised to ax is absolutely integrable, then only this Fourier transform exists. For that, we start with the Fourier cosine transform definition. Fc bar of omega is equal to root of 2 by pi integral 0 to infinity f of x cos omega x. Now we put f of x as e raised to x. That is equal to root of 2 by pi integral 0 to infinity e raised to x into cos omega x dx. We expand this integral using our result integral e raised to ax into cos bx. So root of 2 by pi into e raised to x divided by here coefficient of x in exponential is 1. So 1 square plus omega square into 1 into cos omega x plus omega into sin omega x. Limit varies from 0 to infinity. When I put upper limit what happened? When I put x equal to infinity this e raised to infinity will come. e raised to infinity is infinity. That means this integral will not be finite. Or in another words this Fourier transform does not exist. So when x tends to infinity that means when we put the upper limit infinity to this expression it is not finite and so the transform does not exist. This transform exists only if e raised to minus x is in the f of x. In that case e raised to minus x goes to 0 when x tends to infinity. That is the idea. So this is the key step. The Fourier transform exists only if this integral is finite. Here this integral is not finite that means it is infinity so we cannot say that the Fourier transform Fourier cosine transform do exist next problem is find Fourier sine transform of f of x equal to 1 by x so we write the definition of Fourier sine transform then put f of x equal to 1 by x and finish the integral by definition Fourier sine transform is equal to root of 2 by pi integral 0 to infinity f of x sine omega x dx that is equal to root of 2 by pi integral 0 to infinity here f of x is 1 by x so 1 by x sin omega x dx now we look into this integral integral 0 to infinity sin omega x by x dx integral 0 to infinity sin a t by t dt is equal to pi by 2 we use that result directly here so we got root of pi by 2 this integral is evaluated using this uh, standard on result integral 0 to infinity sin a t by t dt is equal to pi by 2 we have already verified this result in Laplace transform and Fourier transform next problem find Fourier sine transform f of x equal to e raised to minus x by x start with Fourier sine transform definition then simplify the expression and evaluate the integral that is the procedure by Fourier sine transform we have fs bar of omega is equal to root of 2 by pi integral 0 to infinity f of x sin omega x dx. So f of x is e raised to minus x by x here. I denote this integral as capital I. Capital I is equal to root of 2 by pi integral 0 to infinity e raised to minus x by x sin omega x dx. See if this x is not here we can evaluate this integral but presence of this x make things complicated. So we use an idea to elude this x from the denominator the simplest operation is take the derivative of this expression with respect to omega so this e raised to minus x by x does not contain x only term containing omega is sin omega x when we take derivative of sine we got cos omega x into differentiation with respect to omega leads to into x term here that x and this x get cancelled then evaluate this integral and finally we integrate that back we go d, d uh, i or our original integral for your sign transform that is key step so di by d omega is equal to root of 2 by pi integral 0 to infinity e raised to minus x by x into derivative of sine is cos cos omega x into derivative of omega x with respect to omega is x into x dx is x and x get cancelled so we got root of 2 by pi integral 0 to infinity e raised to minus x cos omega x dx now we can evaluate this integral so root of 2 by pi e raised to minus x divided by minus 1 square plus omega square that is 1 plus omega square start a long bracket then minus 1 into cos omega x so minus cos omega x plus omega into integral of cos that is sine sine omega x limit varies from 0 to infinity when I put upper limit infinity e raised to minus infinity goes to 0 upper limit is 0 minus when we put lower limit 0 here e raised to 0 is 1 1 into 
cos 0 is 1 1 into minus 1 so we got minus 1 when we put 0 here this omega into sin 0 that goes to 0 so the constant 1 by 1 plus omega square into upper limit minus lower limit so di by d omega is equal to root of 2 by pi into minus into minus positive so 1 by 1 plus omega square now we have to find i for that integrate both sides with respect to omega when we integrate left side with respect to omega i get back i that is equal to root of 2 by pi into integral 0 to infinity 1 by 1 plus omega square is tan inverse so tan inverse omega plus c now we have to find this uh, constant of integration c using initial condition but when we put omega is equal to 0 fs bar of omega is equal to 0 because we write down fs bar of omega as root of 2 by p integral 0 to infinity f of x sin omega x dx when i put omega equal to 0 here sin omega x that is sin 0 goes to 0 so fs bar of omega I becomes 0 i use that condition here so left side is 0 now i put omega is equal to 0 here tan by 0 is again 0 so 0 is equal to 0 plus c 0 is equal to 0 plus c that means c is equal to 0 hence fs bar of omega is equal to this i that is root of 2 by pi into tan inverse omega plus 0 how we get answer fs bar of omega is equal to root of 2 by pi tan inverse omega next as a remark if f of x equal to e raised to minus ax by x then fs bar of omega has some change that change is here a is replaced by here this a is replaced by minus a and x there is no replacement happen so we can simply using change of scale property or we evaluate this complete integral using this e raised to minus ax by x so the result is root of 2 by pi tan inverse omega by a we can simply use a change of scale property here e raised to minus we can rewrite e raised to minus ax by ax into some 1 by a e raised to minus ax by ax is actually change of scale that is 1 by a into f bar of x by a we use that result so we got root of 2 by pi tan by omega by a so do this problem as a homework there is also one more problem that is find the Fourier sine transform f of x equal to e raised to minus ax minus e raised to minus bx by x here also these type of terms will come here so start with Fourier sine transform definition Fourier sine transform of f plus g is equal to a into fs bar of f plus fs bar of g it is it is called a linearity property so fs bar of our f of x equal to fs bar of first time e raised to minus ax by x minus fs bar of second time e raised to minus bx by s now use this result root of 2 by pi into tan inverse tan e raised to minus ax by x is equal to root of 2 by pi into tan inverse omega by a so tan inverse omega by a second time that is also one root of 2 by pi i take it outside tan inverse of this is our constant minus b here this is the constant minus b so the result become tan inverse omega by b so we can use linearity property and this remark we got for your sine transform of e raised to minus ax minus e raised to minus bx by omega the similar way we can find for your cosine transform of this f of x uh, as in the case of sine transform now you should do this problem find the Fourier cosine transform f of x equal to e raised to minus ax by x yourself using the same idea because a division by x in this expression you cannot evaluate the Fourier cosine transform directly so that you consider this Fourier cosine transform of this expression as i taking derivative with respect to omega on both sides so x will be cancelled now evaluate the integral then take back to i by integrating this result with respect to omega that is the key idea so that is all about this problem session thank you thank you very much